So what you're about to see is a small part of our research about uh, developing AI tools for venture capital. I'm going to show a very practical application as a first video. We're probably going to publish a series of videos discussing the tools we're using right now. But this first video is about an agent that performs a preliminary but very fast analysis of a deck. Okay, so the goal here is in less than 60 seconds to just drop the deck and get a high quality report, including interesting questions to ask the company and even a score uh, based on what we probably will be thinking about the company. And I can tell you she's getting better and better at uh, thinking exactly like us. So you need to imagine this AI analyst, uh, but not an AI analyst that just uh, thinks right, but better an AI analyst that in this case thinks like me, okay? Because um, I've been training her for quite a long time right now, making her read every Lancet, every New England Journal of Medicine, every Nature, every Science Magazine, every deal, every news from the biotech sector related to um, venture capital, etc. right? So she developed like a model of what we do and uh, she is thinking like me in a very weird way. So she's trained to be brutally concise and, uh, and very to the point. So uh, again, I will be using this mental map that I use, excuse me, for having some of the areas a bit blurred, but it, it's an internal mental map that uh, the, the team uses in order to have a very quick understanding of a company. As you can see here, uh, well, it, it's a complex map, but the important thing, this video is not about this map. The video is about an AI that is able to perform a market analysis, to look into the CEO, to look at his profile, uh, to um, analyze many things that we use to see if there's a good fit uh, with, with our fund, right? So, um, by the way, this is not meant to replace any analyst. Let me tell you that right now. I mean think it's, it is very useful to make the analyst um, perform uh, or being better right and um, and use their precious brain time to all the things that could add uh, more value again this is just a first analysis of the deck but let me uh, just uh, stop the video now uh, because I want you to see the full screen In any case, let me just show you an example to see how quick and how good she does the job. I'm gonna use a, a company that's called here Test. Okay, I'm gonna cover the name of the company and some of the comments precisely not to show, I mean, out of respect for the company. Uh, but uh, I have this deck, I have all the uh, outputs cleared. I'm gonna just... Um, run it from uh, here and I will press run and it's gonna finish the, the report uh, hopefully in less than 60 seconds which is the goal okay so as you can see it started um, uh, doing her thing uh, the first thing it's gonna do is to read the deck and provide just a very quick context she's already doing that. This is the cell that takes uh, longer because uh, it, it is reading the full deck, right? Uh, but after that, it's very fast uh, in her analysis, including competitive analysis, etc. Here we have uh, the um, first summary. Is it an interesting problem to solve? Does it have compelling signs? It's looking at the results and the delta, etc. Excuse me about that. And uh, yeah, so field indication modality, are we interested or not? And let me just, um, here we have this. And as you can see, it's thinking very quickly, okay? And building like a database that will help us 
uh, identifying its grade until the end. Let me go to the end just to wait for her. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. So we're waiting for this uh, spider plot first, which will give us some indication on the quality of the company. And here we have the first uh, spider plot. Um, what I'm reading about this company is that the problem is an interesting one, that the science, they have very good results. Uh, the fit to in vivo is uh, here, then uh, clinical things, governance, this company is probably very early stage and has nothing yet. And uh, our exit thesis, meaning how, because we always have a plan A and a plan B for every company that we're investing, and plan A is always an early liquidity event, right? So these are the grades and here, and this is the report. Uh, it is built, it's a 12th uh, Word document page uh, report. And um, yeah, of course, we can also run statistics about um, the companies that we see, you not know, trying to find correlations between the characteristics of a company and our degree of interest or its final outcome it's to understand better why we love the companies we love and we discard the companies we discard okay so uh, that's uh, also something that uh, that the, the system can can do for us what i want to do now is to show a little bit how i train her um, because the first training is a reinforced learning based training. It's a transformer, of course, a natural language processing model. Um, the first model needs the weights. And by the way, let me go first to the start of the code, but just to see how I import for those who are a bit more technical. So IA stands for Artificial Intelligence Analyst, right? And uh, I'm using the OpenAI model as well as the DeepSeq model, but I'm importing the first IA training weights. Um, she has been training for quite a few months already, as I told you, and uh, I import these weights and they are already into the system. Okay, and let me go back then to where we were, to the, to the training, excuse me. And um, yeah, the, the way I typically do this by talking to her. Okay, so um, she's gonna think carefully about uh, uh, what I'm telling her and she's gonna come back to me with a few questions but typically let me show you I do this in a, in a conversational mode better but she learns every time I train her uh, I drop a, a new deck I tell her what I think of how she did and uh, she reacts and she adjusts her weights for the next time let me show you So, Aya, good morning, how are you? Hello, Luis. What did I do wrong with the last analysis? <laughs> Maybe the AI just needs a coffee break too. I can see you have a very good sense of humor, but let's lower the uh, sense of humor to maybe 60%. Okay, Luis, sense of humor setting reduced to 60%. Yeah, I'm uh, showing how you work or how I train you for a video that I'm preparing for. Um, some other colleagues in the venture capital uh, uh, world. Well, hello to all your venture capital colleagues. Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, I think the elegance score was way too high for what this company deserves. Sure. What criteria do you use to assess the elegance of a scientific concept? For example, how clear is the mechanism of action and how multifactorial or unifactorial is the disease? Yeah, I'm gonna stop you here because I don't want to modify any weights uh, for this. This was like to show how I interact with you and how I train you, but this is a conversation between uh, Aya and myself after every deck I drop and she keeps on, um, on adjusting her weights. Anything else you wanna say before uh, closing the video, Aya? Goodbye, Luis. I look forward to our next interaction. So finally, I'm gonna show uh, a few examples of other reports that Aya can produce. Uh, remember, Aya has been fine-tuned 
on top of uh, a large language model. That means she has been retrained uh, by making her read every science, every nature, every journal of interest, every clinical trial, every new drug approved, every deal, every merger or acquisition, every partnership, I mean, you name it. She reads everything. In fact, she's reading right now 24-7 at my place. She never stops reading. And um, yeah, this is a report that I asked uh, Aya um, about epilepsy therapies because we were interested in the problem. Let me show you something. Let me bring back my map because of course I want to clarify this is uh, the map that you saw before. But at the end of the day, this is probably one of the most important uh, uh, items for us, right? Because we choose here at the fund um, about what are the modalities that are more interesting for us or that would be in the future of medicine or the indications that are more interesting to solve right now and this changes every quarter right so we focus our research on the things we believe are going to be in the future of medicine uh, yeah so uh, we direct Aya uh, to find things in those indications modalities and fields right but again um, when I talked to Aya, remember I, I, um, I triggered these uh, reports by just asking her uh, verbally. I asked her for a Word document and she tells me, for example, okay, I will conduct a comprehensive competitive analysis in defining all companies, development therapies for epilepsy, particularly drug resistant epilepsy, blah, this will include everything, and this will be global. And uh, well, that's the setting she starts with and then Here's the report, and as you can see, well, it starts with an introduction, then a competitor analysis, starting with small molecules, with all these companies in the space. Um, then she will follow with biologics and RNA therapies, and then gene therapies, and then cell therapies, and then synthetic biology is the structure that I trained her to, uh, to report. Uh, and then she does a competitive analysis with uh, value propositions and unique selling propositions of the different companies from an investor's point of view. Again, she has a model of what venture capital is, right? These are deals, regulatory landscape, and market entry. And at the end, typically, she exactly she performs a competitive matrix. I always ask her to write like a table. The format is not very good, but I'm not very worried about the format. I'm, I just care about the data, right? This is not a bank uh, report. Uh, but as you can see, it's a quite um, uh, long report. In this case, it was 19 pages long. She, it takes like a, a few minutes for her to prepare this. Uh, this is another example. We use her to find leading Spanish biotech researchers in cell and gene therapy and synthetic biology, which is again our field of interest. And then she produces like a long report. Uh, we, it, there's no need to go through it, but it's uh, quite a long report about emerging people. And this report changes uh, every now and then, of course. And finally, the third example I want you to uh, consider is, let me go up, this is I don't know, this is just an example of TCRT, but not TCRT therapies, but the leading edge developments, which is uh, what really matters for us. So I always ask her to be uh, focused on cutting edge technologies, right? So, and as always, regulatory landscapes, clinical transition bottlenecks, investment trends, venture funding analysis, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and here's the report. She starts with scientific and technological innovations, AI-driven AI antigen prediction, non-viral vectors. I don't know. It's um, full of uh, a combination therapies and cytokine support. Yeah, all, all the things that interest us. And yeah, it's very important to understand that these are references. If I click here, I will go immediately to the reference that she was uh, uh, looking at, right? So it's like uh, she has bibliography indeed. So we can check, we can fact check for everything she says. Um, well, I was like TCRTs, in vivo programming, key plays and emerging startups. This is a very long study. In fact, I think it's yeah, a 28 pages long study that she is able to produce uh, in, uh, yeah, um, again, a few minutes. 
So we're very happy with uh, her performance.